All right, so for this video, we are taking a part of a conversation we had last year with Michigan native Perry Russo. Perry has killed a lot of great Michigan bucks. He was a regional director for the QDMA and was a great host for this podcast. But something that was very interesting is he specifically likes to target east winds. It's something we haven't really talked about on the podcast before then and since then. So we wanted to revisit it as you guys are maybe hanging some last minute sets or continuing to pay attention to the wind. He's had a lot of great success with east winds, which is kind of strange. So we're going to talk about it right here. Here we go. I guess let's uh, let's start switching switching gears a little okay. bit. There's, um, you know, while we were shooting this Whitetail Cribs episode, there was just a – you're a very knowledgeable guy. been doing this for a long time. We, I mean, we have the opportunity to, t- to go around and talk to a lot of different people in the industry, um, not only in the industry, but some very, very good hunters and killers, guys that are mm-hmm. killing good deer – everywhere they go very efficient but there's some things that you were talking about that um you really very unique yeah yeah unique piqued my interest and in things that that may, maybe were worded a little bit different or that i have not even heard of it so i want to start talking about some yeah. of this um jake you have a list of list of some stuff like yeah top to bottom Let's first thing when we do, came in here that caught my attention was hunting east winds um most people aren't set up for an east wind, but I do agree in the sense of in Illinois, there's a lot of between the dates of like November 8th and 11th, there's usually an east wind out of those three or four days. Um, is that something that you've seen or when you're saying those east winds, are you thinking any east wind? It could be early season, rut, late season. If I have, if I know the night before that I'm getting an east wind and I was working, I would take that day off. <laughs> okay. I mean, one thousand percent, I'm taking that day off, and the reason being is because, like, if you're hunting uh, an older buck, I, I think the way I explained it to you guys is like, he's on a, a regular routine, especially early season. You're not going to change his pattern, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, an east wind is not a typical wind. We get, if you look at data, we have just as many south winds as we have northwest winds, okay? But when we get that occasional east wind. If you see a buck, let's say he's in, I was kind of describing a scenario for you guys. Let's say he's in a south, uh, let's say he's in a southeast corner, okay, in the morning. You see him feeding, right? You really can't go hunt him, but you see him. Well, I'm going to go hunt him, and I'm going to kill him probably that day. And that if it's an east wind, I'm going to kill him on that northwest corner, especially if I know the intel on him. So I always say to guys, you know, always pick my brain, I says, I get as much intel as I possibly can on a buck, and I'll put myself in the best spot, and I really don't care about the wind because I'm going in there to kill him. I'm not, you know, if, if I wanted to play tiddlywinks with him, I just would stay on the outside, <laughs> outside edge and try to get him when he's coming out or trying to get him, you know, on an evening hunt. No, that's, that's not working. You got to have... My philosophy has always been, as, as Borey's been more on an aggressive side than s- sitting back, I'd rather go into his bedding area, and I've killed a lot of bucks in bedding areas. This buck I hunted in Iowa, I killed him. He actually came back to his bed, which is another story. But um, I like going in and being right on the fringe. Like a buck that I'm set up on uh, right now, he's probably five, six years old. He's about 15 minutes from here. And I didn't hunt him last year, and I'm going to hunt him on an east wind this year is how I have this whole thing set up. When that east wind comes in, the first east wind, I'm probably going to get a sighting at least if I don't kill him. So but I expect to kill him on an east wind. But here's the thing. He's like a creature of habit, like on Sunday going to church. You go to the same pew. You sit at the same spot. He's sleeping in one or two, three beds that he has let's say in a 40-acre woodlot that he frequents all the time. And now he wants to, he's got a, a wind that's really kind of screwed him up, and he really doesn't want to change his pattern. It's about the only time that I feel that a deer will change his pattern or do what they call he'll cross the wind instead of going directly north, you know, north, or, north or south or east or west, like on an east wind. Instead of him going north, he's going to maybe go northwest on an angle. Well, that's how I shot that four-year-old I was explaining to you. I knew I'd never hunted the interior of that 40-acre woodlot, but I knew that in the evenings I would see him in that northwest corner, 
I knew that I could, on an east wind, I could kill him because he wasn't going to get my scent. So I went in there real aggressive. I was on an inside corner, but I was about 160 yards, actually, from the inside corner. And I shot him. In fact, when I took my friend in the following day to show him what tree I was in, he goes, I've hunted that woods since I was a little boy. He says, I would have never picked that tree. He says, yeah. I said, most guys would never pick that tree. I said, but I picked that tree for a reason. I knew that that deer was going to either cross or cut in front of me, and I wasn't going to get a shot. So I said, it was a 50-50 shot. And I said, I I shot him at like 4 o'clock. I said to my wife, she's sitting right in the room there. I said, it's 3.30. I said, East wind. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot him tonight. <laughs> I, just, I, for, I was gone 45 minutes. As he's already dead. They already <laughs> sent her a picture from my phone. So do you think, look, okay, so I guess let's, die, let's, yeah. let's elaborate on this a little bit because I'm still trying to wrap my, my mind around exactly what's going on. So an east wind is a very uncommon wind uncommon. for a lot of different places. Um, and it, usually it takes some kind of big coastal storm or maybe something mm-hmm. dropping I don't even know, maybe dropping from Canada. It might be a little bit different here, but I'm trying to you know, think in terms of where we are uh, in Ohio. So you have an east wind. Most of the time, you know, from what I see, and again, this, you might have a different opinion on this, but deer are bedding in locations where they have that wind blowing across their back. They have side or some kind mm-hmm. of um, security cover, and they can visually see kind of out in front of them, whether that's an edge of a swamp, uh, you know, upper one-third hill country, whatever. Are you saying the deer, they're still bedding, I guess, in the same types of areas or those same mm-hmm. three beds, but with that wind, they don't have, because it happens so, I guess, it's not very frequent that they don't have a necessary, they don't really have a pattern for that east wind, and it kind of throws them off being vulnerable? Is that what? Yeah, I mean, m- most deer, when they're out feeding at night, okay, if they if they're betting like on a southeast corner. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're going to get up in the middle of the day, twelve. One, I mean, a, a buck's getting up. He's not yes. laying there all day. He's right. he's getting up at least two or three times. Yep. Okay, he's milling around. He may walk an edge every once in a while. You'll get a glimpse of him, but most of the time he's on the interior. He's not going to walk that far. He's going to make a big circle. He's either going to come back to his bed or bed down somewhere in between. Now, if you hunt that same buck and you're trying to hunt them from the west, you really can't hunt them from the west because you're always, if you hunt them from the west, you're always going to educate them. Mm-hmm. If you try to hunt them from the south, you're always going to educate them. You got to, you know, it's like I prefer to sit, especially on morning hunts, I prefer to sit at home than go out then educate the buck that I'm after because I know that if I slip in at 1 o'clock, there's a good chance I'm going to shoot them between 2 and 4. And I've, I've made that happen so many times. So the biggest key is uh, the east winds are such an off throw to a bucks. He doesn't. He's not used to it all the time. But he'll tolerate. He, it's tolerable to him. What he doesn't tolerate is you. Let's say three times during the week, hunting that spot. You know you shouldn't be hunting, and he knows you're there, and he's ne- he's never going to give you a shot. Right. You know, and you're just going to spook him out of there. Mm-hmm. So I would say you probably, like a lot of guys feel, I think, they give up mornings. But I probably give up more mornings than anybody. And I'll go in midday. I'll go in at 10 o'clock. You know, I'll go in. I know when they're already bedded and sl- slip in and then try to get out. The wind shifts, and I'm out of there. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty mobile, always have been. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm just not going to educate them. I had a buck that uh, we called freight train uh, at our farm. And uh, I wanted to shoot so bad. He was friggin' just a just a friggin' freak, and uh, never got a chance to shoot him. And uh, but uh, he was a buck that had a huge home range. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with those east winds, do you see deer those bucks ever moving with tailwinds? Are they always kind of quartering two? How do you see that movement happening with those? Most with those? of the, it's either north or south. Mm-hmm. They're either traveling north or they're traveling south on an east wind. Because they're getting a crosswind, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, they'll say that a, a buck won't walk with the wind at his back. No. <laughs> <laughs> they do it all the time. Yeah. And uh, But you just have to be, it's like um, 
there's certain bucks that we were talking about earlier. There's certain bucks that, that I feel like uh, you see a buck that you know that's not in your area as a floater buck. You want to go after him, but you go, oh, I'm just going to hunt the edge. You know, I don't, I don't want to push him out of this woodlot. He's the only buck that really doesn't know that woodlot. Okay, now's the time to be aggressive, go in there from whatever direction, get in there and set up and sit on him all day. He's going to get up and mill, mill around. That's, that's something like we talk about non-core core bucks or, you know, bucks that come through during the rut that are strange, like, neighbor, you know, un, unfamiliar bucks. They're but, from two miles. They're from a mile, right. two miles, three miles away. But the point that you just made that, like, this is such a common sense thing. Like, that buck doesn't know those woods. He, his home range is two miles away.